Welcome to another episode of K5ATA Ham Radio. Today, we're taking a look at the ICOM IC 2730A dual band ham radio. So let's get our ham radio game on and take a look on K5ATA Ham Radio. All right, here it is, the ICOM IC2730A dual band ham radio we're going to review here on K5ATA Ham Radio. So before we get started, do me a favor, hit that like button, hit subscribe, we do appreciate it. Helps the channel out a good bit and helps us get more stuff so we can review. A special thanks goes out to um, Brad over at Natural State Overland. Thanks again for providing this radio for us to review. Um, we'll take care of it until you get it put in your truck. And let's see what we got. This was provided to us by some of the good folks over at Natural State Overland. It's a, like an off-road group. I'm going to provide you a, a link to their site. It's a really cool bunch of folks over there. So we appreciate y'all sending this radio for us to take a look at. Let's see what we've got. <clears throat> Get down to the nitty-gritty first here. We have... the radio itself. Got a mic input and looks like to connect the head unit. <clears throat> Get this box out of the way. And then we have in here three different boxes here. Let's see what we've got. There we go. Alright, that's the head. nice lightweight and we'll put that back in the box now while uh, NSO Natural State Overland did provide this radio for us to evaluate <clears throat> this is actually going into one of those guys trucks this is actually their radio they just <clears throat> wanted to know if I wanted to uh, take a look at it before they went and installed it so I'll be sending this back to them. Here's your power cord to connect your head unit and then microphone. Let's take a look at the microphone here. It's a nice looking microphone. Looks well, like most other icon mics. Well made. Nice feel to it. Alright, so here's what we're going to do. I'm assuming this is... Okay, so it's got the same standard power hookup as all your other mobile rigs for the most part. So I'm not going to unwrap this one. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to hook it up to... I'll unplug my radio I have here in the shack. That way, when they go to install it, they've got this guy brand new. I think that's all I've got in here. Yep, that's it. Alright, so let's get this thing plugged up and see what we think. Okay, so a couple of things about the radio. I've got it powered up, um, brought the antenna out from my, my shack rig. It ships with the face detached, however, it does not have a mount for the actual control head. Now, I don't know how they're planning to mount this in the uh, truck over at Natural State that it's going to go in, but that's definitely something to consider, is you're going to need to have some kind of mount. Now, Brad, the guy that um, reached out to me about doing this review on this radio, he's his truck is sweet. I mean, he's got he can fabricate some stuff, so he may be planning on fabricating his own. But just know ahead of time that if you order this radio and you plan to remote the head, it does not have a bracket in there for that. Um, I'm sure you can get one that's Icon branded for I don't know a chunk of change but it is what it is. Okay, one thing I do like already, and I haven't even turned this thing on. Microphone. This is your microphone right here. Microphone cable. I can plug it into the control head, or I can plug it into the radio unit itself. I love that. Um, I do a lot of POTA stuff. In fact, right here, if I can get in there, is 
one of the radios I use for Parks on the Air, and I hate that I can't plug my microphone into my Kenwood TS-480 head. So that's a good thing. Kudos to you, Icom. Okay, so we're going to plug this in there. And here goes the magic moment. I am going to leave that annoying film on there, because like I said, this is going back to those guys at Natural State. Oh, helps if I turn on the power supply. I'll go ahead and tell you, if you're planning to use this in the shack, um, it takes a, a power supply of at least 15 amps. So, all right, there it goes. It comes on, and you've got a nice, large, easy-to-read screen. Okay, some of the features of this bad boy. Um, triple output. It's got 5 watts, 15 watts, or 50 watts, and that's on both bands. Um, 2 meter, you can receive from 118 to 174, and on your 70 centimeter band, it's like 375 to 550, so that's that's a large receive range. And it's got over 1,000 memories, like 1,052 memories. Not that I know 1,052 repeaters and stuff to put in there, but hey. Um, it's a true dual band dual receive radio. You can have it go VHF, 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 UHF, UHF, UHF. VHF, UHF, whatever floats the boat. However many different ways you want to toss those around, you can have it received that way. It's got an auto mute function for the subband. So, you know, it mutes that one when you have traffic on your main band there. So, um, I like that. As far as menu access, all right. So, for the menus, let me set that there. Hang on. Let me drink of that, Joe. Okay, so to access the menus, you have a button that conspicuously enough says menu. Okay, and it's got menu tone, and to change your menu options, you just turn your dial here till you get to the one you want. Now, down here on the bottom of the screen, now you now have it's like a forward button a backward button and looks like the little enter button and then you have a clear button okay so <clears throat> let's go ahead and get to a setting here menu mode let's see what that does when you hit it okay so you can change its mode so FM what else does it do okay so you've got FM and FM narrow so okay to get back out of that okay you can just hit clear and back out so um, as far as the menu settings and stuff, that's extremely easy to get into. Some of these radios, you know, it's like 87 clicks just to change your power output kind of stuff. So that's a good thing. Okay, so we're going to program this to hit the repeater over in Oxford. Now I've put the frequency in 147.33. Okay, so I've got that in there. show you how I got that tone in there. Just hit, oops, not that button, sorry. Hit the menu button. Okay, and using either of these dials, okay, you're going to go and tell it, hey, I want a tone. You can turn this to be the tone squelch of the tone. Remember, tone squelch is, you, the repeaters are going to actually have to transmit that tone to uh, open the squelch on your radio. You don't want that one unless your repeater has that. Okay, oops, so we're going to set it at tone. Hit the enter key. And we're going to go to tone and set it at 107.2 there it is um, out of habit I automatically set both of them at 107.2 even though I'm not using it so the same thing here just go boom 107.2 and then hit back out <clears throat> and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna test it K5 ATA testing and you can see we open the repeater. I don't know if anybody's there or not. All right, so Curtis said he's got his radio handy. It's an HT, so it may or may not come in that well. We'll just see. W5WRP, K5ATA. Go ahead for W5WRP. <clears throat> hey, Curtis, I'm just uh, testing out this ICOM... 2730A radio, and was curious if you could give me a signal report. How does it sound? Standing out here next to the house, man, loud and clear. Um, no real static or 
anything uh, inhibiting the hearing you. All right, so I'm going to switch it to low power just by hitting that button. How about now? I'm on low power now, so it's putting out 5 watts. Sweet. All right, man. I appreciate it. Um, go ahead and finish doing this review up on for the YouTube channel. So I appreciate you coming back to me. K5 ATA. I'll be clear after your final. No problem. 75 WR be clear. Okay. And so with that, you can see it, it puts out well. I mean, on low power... I got in the machine. The machine's about 19 hours, or hours, hey, about 19 miles as the bird flies from me. Um, I do have a decent antenna outside, though. So on 5 watts, I was full quieting into the machine. A um, couple little things to note, like I pointed out. Change your power output. It's just hit the button. Low, medium, high. Um, that's your menu. Your monitor button, or reverse button. Okay, you can hit boom. And as obnoxiously loud as that is, uh, you also know that I'm now, I can easily hit a button and listen to the input on a repeater, which is another nice thing. A lot of the <clears throat> less expensive radios, you have to finagle into menu settings. Hey, that fan finally cut off. You have to finagle into some, some menu settings, um, find where it is, and by the time you get there, somebody else has already gotten it or the guy's gone away and it doesn't do any good. Um, I like that you have separate controls here. You have these buttons are identical on both sides, one for each band. So your scan, now I don't have enough frequencies in here to scan. Go to VA, VFO mode or to memory mode here. Um, your MR, your call frequency here, and your main band. You have that on both sides. Like I pointed out, you have. A squelch knob for each side, you have a VF, VFO knob for each side, and you have a volume knob for each side. Um, microphone can plug in here, or it can plug in here. I've tried it with it plugged in both places. They both work just fine. Okay. Okay, you've got your SO239 for your antenna here. You've got your fan. Um, it is a sizable fan. You can see how much that thing sticks out there. Um, and it does get relatively loud, so consider that when you're deciding where you're going to place it. And you've got two speaker jacks in the back. And when you look at it, you've got two speaker jacks, and you can actually have a different speaker for each band, which is kind of cool. You know, um, you can have, like, if you put just one in speaker jack one, okay, then you're going to hear both bands. But if you put two speakers in, you know, you can have one on one side, one on the other. Personally, that would make me kind of crazy, I think, but hey. Um, one one goes to your main band, one goes to your sub band. That can be kind of cool. Um, you know, maybe have one on one side of your head, one on the other, and then you can, like, have ham radio all around you, like at the movies, all around you. Okay. Um... You've got, obviously, your pigtail here for your power. And like I said, it's the standard power. Um, it is a fused power line, as it should be. And other than that, it seems to be a solid little radio. Um, menus are extremely easy to access. Gives you a little voltage reading when you turn it on. I don't know if you saw that or not, so let me try that again. It says I'm getting 13.9 volts. And... Okay, and I really wish it came with that remote mount kit. Now, having said that, there's actually... Let me see if I can switch over here. Okay, at DX Engineering, <clears throat> not that I'm saying one over the other, but this was one of the first ones when you, you know, hit it up in Google. You can get little mount kits for it to go right there on your air conditioner. Um, 13 bucks, and it just, like, clamshell mounts in there. There are a lot of options out there for it. You know, here's the actual on gigaparts. When it finally loads. Okay, there's the one that they actually say you're supposed to use. And 
that's a must-have accessory. That's a $79 must-have accessory. Somehow I'm betting we can find that a little cheaper. Hey, free gift. Okay, but that's 34 bucks. So, you know, it's up to you whether that's worth the money for you. I mean, you're looking at 79 I don't, I'm not sure what that's for. I guess that's to mount, suction cup mount it to that. But uh, that's what it looks like. But, so you're looking at, se no, I don't have questions for you right now. 79 bucks plus 34 bucks so you're looking at you know another 113 bucks and I'm reasonably certain that we can find a way to do that for for less than that it actually shows you yeah so 34 dollars gets you that little plate and then another 79 dollars gets you that little suction cup and I'm Bet and we can find one of these guys for a cell phone or something that'll work. But overall, not a bad looking little radio. I'm jealous of the the guys over there at a uh, Nat Natural State Overland. They're you know they're starting to get some ham radio licenses. They've been using like FRS and CB and stuff like that. Um, that's a great hobby to to have. And in fact, I was talking to one of them, Brad, over there, and saying, "Man, you need to go ahead and get your general." You're going out to some of these national forests and stuff. Poda, baby. Activate some parks on the air. But uh, this is a great use for ham radio. You know, he's he's going to have this installed. Some of his buddies are going to have this installed, and it's going to increase their communications range considerably. Um, use this thing for a crossband repeater, and you're off and running, you know, in, in an emergency or whatever. So that's it. Um, like I said, great-looking little radio. I wish I had one myself. Um do appreciate y'all watching. Hit that like button. Hit subscribe. It helps the channel out. Y'all take care, and we hope to see you on the air. 7-3.